morning, everyone, and welcome along to League of Europe. We are here for F1 2021, of course. It is Season 6, Division 1, Round 15 of the Championship, as we take in the Baku Street uh, oh, the Baku City Circuit for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. My name is James Hager, going to be taking you to the stream, as always, on a Saturday night, and joining me in the commentary box for the second time this season, it is Miss Jessica Ball. Jess, how are you doing? I'm doing all right, thanks, James. And if we didn't think that Mexico would be crazy enough, I would say Baku is even more crazy due to the fact that this track is quite narrow. Definitely a race of attrition. It's the second longest circuit on the calendar with a long lap time. It's going to be absolutely crazy. And we wouldn't have predicted the top three in Division 1 after the race in Mexico. The race was absolutely insane. It was absolutely insane. And it was, of course, XL Neo who picked up his first win of the season. And then, of course, in third was Verstappen. He did not do enough, though, to try and bring the championship fight into Azerbaijan. But Montana, of course, is our three or four time, I think, now Division One champion in LOE. And no man can now stop him. And, of course, he does lead the championship on 222 points. He is here tonight. He did promise the last the first challenge as well. So it might be interesting to see if he goes through with that. But Montana, of course, leading the way. Verstappen in second on 139 points. Neo in third on 115. Daniel fourth on 103. And Yossas in fifth on 89. Rocco sixth on 85. Then Campbell seventh on 81. Nathan in eighth on 80. Cantera in ninth on 72. And Dylan in tenth on 63. Yul Green, Rooter, Jensen, Hyper, Larkin ran off the top 15. Vaporizer, Alphatrix, Izza, Repaz, Juma, and Yul Melmat have all picked up points so far. Luca, Yordi, and the brand new driver who I'll come on to in just a second, Stephen Osh, or NOX, Stephen Osh, as he's shown within the lobby there. He is the new debutante, and he is going to be debuting here tonight in Azerbaijan. But Montana, of course, wrapping up the championship, it really now means that the focus is on the battle for second, and for Stappen, Neo, and really Daniel, that can take that fight for second position. Yeah, exactly. Just because the championship is over, it doesn't mean that the positions behind P1 are over as well, just like you said as well. And I think that Verstappen had a very good start to the season with a few uh, P2s along the way as well. And obviously Nia with a really good result last time I'm out in Mexico as well. She's going to be very, very tight. And obviously the last time I commentated with you, James, around uh, LOE is when Daniel took a win in Austria, which was uh, his first win since Austria last season, believe it or not, as well. So uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be tight. Uh, I, can't, I can't say that... Um, uh, Daniel could get second, but I think the more likely it's going to be between Neo, Neo and Verstappen just to take that. And it could be interesting for the constructors as well to see who I, who, who will stand out in there as well, because I believe the constructors are still on offer, or is that the size already? I don't know. No, the Constructors is still up for grabs. Mercedes leading the way on 321 points. I think they can wrap it up tonight as long as they can outscore Haas by around 20 or so points in terms of the championship fight there. So Mercedes can wrap up the Constructors here tonight if they haven't already. It will be mathematically possible, though, still for Haas to try and catch them. They're on 220 points. Mercedes on 321. Aston Martin in third on 195. Red Bull fourth on 148. McLaren in fifth on 131. Ferrari sixth on 120. 24, Alpine in 7th on 79, Alfa Tauri in 8th on 71, Williams in 9th on 68, and Alfa Romeo in 10th on 45 points. And as I say, Mercedes have got a comfortable 101 point advantage coming into tonight. Repaz, of course, joining Montana alongside in the Mercedes, and he's basically guaranteed now, you would imagine, a constructor's title, even though he's only attended about three races. Well, it doesn't matter as long as you're there and uh, scoring a bit for your team, then you, you get you get a title if your main teammate is doing well, just like what I'm doing in Division 5 where my teammate is doing <laughs> really well and then there's uh, me who usually scores near the bottom as well. But uh, yeah, but I think for some of the, the constructors' battles, both drivers, I think, got to do well in the last few races if you want to take the fight for the constructors. There's one driver that's not scoring very well, probably the main driver's like, look, I want to win the constructors, let's try and score some points okay and that that and that is what uh, the real life battle is between Mercedes and Red Bull like Bottas and Perez are kind of like the the the, the main story to try and help their constructs because if they don't score well then it's probably going to be 
obvious on who's being the constructors battle, but we're about to get started. It is predicted that there could be some safety cars with the way that this track is designed and with the way Carnage is there in the past. And there could be a threat of rain as well. The drivers are hoping there's not going to be rain, but it is likely around this. So let's hope the drivers are prepared with whatever the circumstance, whatever the, the safety cars or weather throw at them. And we'll see what happens when we go to the qualifying session. Yeah, we're just a little into the lobby now. Beautiful blue skies and sunshine, and I was going to curse you by saying you've said the R word too early in terms of the rain, but it is blue skies worth and sunshine, and it's fantastic to see, of course. Beautiful blue sky, of course, in the land of fire, in Baku, in Azerbaijan. The flame towers, of course, towering over the circuit, just down in towards turn seven. And I always like to say the fun fact around here, Eurovision 2012 was hosted in Baku at the Baku Crystal Hall on the coastline, if you didn't know that. Yes, I am a very, very weird person. Verstappen is the first man out on track. Of course, second in the championship coming in tonight, and he is going to be the first to tackle the the extremities of this six kilometer circuit. 3.7 miles, of course, 20 turns awaiting these guys out on track. And of course, Jess, a lot of overtaking opportunities down and towards both turn one and turn three. Yes, because those are the two main DRS zones that follow directly after each other as well. And there's also the opportunities to do it after you go past the castle section and when you go down the hill as well. We've seen quite a few people overtake there too. And we've seen quite a few moments in, uh, se uh, in seasons gone by in real life. The first F1 race around here, 2016, it was a quite a dull race. Uh, mainly because the F2 cars were racing there and they caused carnage. So the F1 drivers knew a lot about uh, what the F2 drivers are doing and they, 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 they didn't do it. So Nico Rosberg won that one. And then I can't remember what year it was, but I think it was uh, Lewis Hamilton, Sebastian Vettel. They kind of break checked each other. Um, I, I can't remember which one it was, but I think it was 2017 uh, where Vettel lost his call there as well. And I think Daniel Ricciardo took the win there as well. And, and obviously Max Verstappen late puncher towards the end with Lance Stroll as well and Pirelli got questions about that so so much things that happened obviously Perez took a win here this year as well in real life which was great to see his second win in Formula One but will we see someone take their first win here today or will we see the likes of obviously Montana go from the back of the grid to win the race well and anything is possible around Baku and we've seen people go from last to near the podium before so let's watch for Stappen. Yeah, let's watch what's happened on the run down and towards turn one breaks. Just after 100 meters ball gets the car rotated in very nicely through turn one. And then in towards the 90 degree left hander of turn two. Yes, I will repeat myself. There is quite a few 90 degree right hander and left hander corners in this first sector. Verstappen is on the run down now in towards turn three. Open up the second DRS zone, of course, where, of course, the old meets the new here in Baku. The old city and the new city come together to form up this six kilometer circle. As now Verstappen comes in towards the right hander of turn four, looking quite neat on his lap so far. The Dutch Minnesi now comes through in towards the chicane of five and six, and I'll come on to the flame towers. A 34.2 through the first sector from Verstappen. There are the flame towers towering over the circuit in the metropolis, of course, of Baku. Of course, being the only metropolis and the only racing circuit as well in Azerbaijan. As now Verstappen comes into the castle section, where I try to go around the outside if somebody wants coming through there. Now towards turn 11, and then towards turn 12, and now coming up towards the highest point of the track to th th through turn 13. Brojong crash there on the right-hand side walls. We now come through the left-hander of 14. Will Verstappen opt to choose the eSports line coming through 50? He can run a lot of curb. He chose to avoid it, and it's, I think, the right decision to make. As Verstappen into this middle sector, 113.4 through the middle sector for Verstappen. A little bit twitchy coming out the middle sector, but he is purple in this middle sector so far. There is a Mercedes going, so I think that might be repelled, so there's backed up on his lap. Verstappen now coming through the kink of 20. It's a nice clean lap from the Dutchman so far. He's got a light all on the line in the early stages of qualifying as he now runs up to the line. I think we might be guaranteed a 138 to begin off with as now Verstappen runs to the line and a 138 flat it is. And that's already my first prediction of tonight, right? Definitely. And we've just seen Jensen come across the line as well. He puts himself into P2, but he's on the medium compound of tyres, so I expect he will go faster on the soft tyre that we chose to go on here, of course. He was purple final Ooh. sector as well. And Campbell, her Verstappen's QBR compatriot, goes fastest by four thousandths of a second. You can't get even closer than that. Jusas goes third fast as he heads towards turn one now. We do have an Alfa Tauri that's going to cross the line soon. I believe that's uh, Jules Mel Matt. I think that's how you say his name, as it's a very long straight, and you're going to be using the DRS right now 
as yet towards the final corner and he's on low ERS as well so he will be on low power but is he going to be the 138 as well? Yes he is, P4, respectable lap from the Alpha Tauri driver. Yeah, good luck from Yul Melmat. However, Iza ahead of him, 38.2. He used Wooter up on that lap. Wooter gave him the slipstream halfway down the straight, and it's not often that you see the slipstream actually being used in this track and through the start-finish straight, of course. But when they do, it is quite potent. And this has gone third with a 138.2, and that was with the assistance of that slipstream. Campbell and Verstappen didn't even bother, and they're 4,000 separating each other. So Izzo, I think, he's got to try and match it up in the first and middle sectors if he wants to try and have a, fi a good final sector. And he'll be hoping, of course, to try and get on top. Nathan is another one coming in towards the middle sector as well, towards the end of the middle sector. He likes this track, does Nathan. He's on the run down now in towards turn 15 and it's 113.6 so a little bit way off what we've seen with Verstappen and Campbell coming through the middle sector but it should be up there around Daniel Vaporizer sort of area comes through the left hander of 18 now through the right hander of 19 and then through the right hander of turn 20 as well but Nathan looks like he's running more of a straight line speed sub so he's going to carry more speed coming across the line so it's going to help him gain the time now on this near one kilometer straight down in towards turn one Nathan runs the line he goes third and actually sets the same lap time as Verstappen and that's how consistent he actually was and it's because I think he's running more gear more of a higher gear through to seventh and eighth gear and that's why Nathan's third instead of being down where Daniel and Vaporizer were in sixth and seventh. 1997 in Jerez we saw three people set the same lap time in qualifying and it was the person who actually set the lap time first whose lap counted higher. So that's why Verstappen is in P2 and Nathan is in P3. But I've seen in some races in league racing where even if you set your lap time first and you set the same lap time, uh, you're a bit lower. So I don't know why. But at least in this context, that explains why Verstappen is second and Nathan is first. Most people Ooh. are going into the pits, but we see, I think, Hyper and Repass on their outlaps. I think we've got uh, the Alpine driver of Cantor down in 60. But he's going to be setting... A lap time now. we got one, two, three, four, five, six people that are meant to be saying lap times. Haven't said a lap. Of course, Montana will be starting at the back seat. Oh, as Cantera has unfortunately invalidated his lap. So you'll have to uh, go again, unfortunately. But this is one of those tracks where invalidating is quite difficult. Apart from when you head to this corner here. Has all. Oh, Nathan's got a five-place grid penalty with a severe collision from the Alfa Romeo driver in P18. That is interesting. So Nathan, if he qualifies, say, uh, P3, he's not going to start in P3. That's not good. Yeah, he hasn't got any damage or visible damage I can see on the car. Nathan there in third, 138 flat. I'd be hoping he can try and get pole position so he starts on the cleaner side of the grid. And it's obviously quite dusty on the inside where the pit wall is, running down in towards turn one, and that's where, of course, pole position is going to be. Campbell in the lead, currently in qualifying. Verstappen in second, Nathan in third. And just come on to about Cantera. I watched him coming through turn one. He invalidated on the outside apex coming through turn one. So that's where Cantera invalidated. He's low on fuel as well, so I imagine this is going to be back into the pit lane for him. Repass, however, of course, is now on a lap. And the German looked very quick, I've got to say, in Imola on his debut last week. And he was fantastic. Two, uh, two weeks ago, I should say, in Imola. He absolutely blitzed the field in qualifying. He was nearly quicker as Montana. Montana, his teammate, and now this is his chance to show. It looks like Montana is taking the easy route. He's taking the escape road, possibly, to try and start from the back of the field. Repass, however, now down towards turn three and through turn four. And Repass now will be hoping to try and set a lap. Campbell low out on top for Stappen second, Nathan in third. Four thousandths of a second covering the top three at the minute. Repass 34.4 through the first sector as he comes now through adjacent to the Flame Towers. Well, these times are quite close at the moment. And yeah, I was watching him below as well. And it's nice to see someone that is new to the Mercedes team really uh, um, get the ground running right off the bat as well. And it's good. Oh, as uh, Repass hit the wall on the left going into the castle section. So he's probably lost a bit of time. But Montana's probably going to like that he's got a very strong teammate for the constructors because there's still the battle going on. And there's still some drivers that could be under threat from losing their Division 1 spot for next season. There's not long till sign-ups open. Uh, Repass is looking very squirmy, actually, going down the hill past turn 16, even though he's purple sector 2. I don't think that means he's purple sector 2. I think it's just a glitch for game, unfortunately. But I'm sure Repass is going to be going again. Who else is on a lap? We've got Hyper, who's on a lap. He is purple sector 2. I wonder if that's telling Porky Pies. We'll see 
what he could do. He's got plenty of ERS this time. I don't think he's got any damage, so this is going to be a representative lap time. No invalidations as well. Ooh. We pass goes pole, <laughs> so his damage did not cost him in either way. And oh, Hyper wow. goes in P3. Hyper does go P3, and he splits the ball pass drivers by two thousandths of a second either way. Unbelievable stuff. Repaz out on top. 37.9. He was adjacent. He was pretty much on the middle sector as Nathan was through the middle sector. He must have found the time coming through the final couple of corners. And that's why now he is on a provisional pole position. But Campbell there in second. He's just about to start a lap. Verstappen, I think, is on one at the minute. Or oh, he's just actually coming off a lap. Might be coming back in the pit lane. And he is coming back in the pit lane. But Campbell, there in second position. What can he respond to? Can he find a good tenth and a half of a second to try and get on top in a provisional pole position so far? Seven Seven minutes and 40 seconds ago, just ticking down underneath that. Repaz out on top, Campbell second, Hyper in third, myself and Jessica Ball, of course, taking you through the action, as always, here on a Saturday night in League of Europe, as Yulbeam goes quickest with a 37.8. So Campbell now has got to find two and a half tenths. Yep, he does. I think the track is getting the most grippy and more rubber is being laid down with more people on their lap. So Campbell may have a better chance. <laughs> what was it set to one? Wow, there's more times going everywhere. Gents is now in the 137. So is just us as well. That is insane. But I was looking at Look Campbell set to as well. one. I was looking at Campbell <laughs> set to one. He was a few temps down. So he is struggling a little bit. So I don't think he's going to get into the 137 unless he has a miraculous final sector and I've seen drivers who have rubbish first and second sectors but they nail the final sector and still improve so it's still not over for Campbell let's see what his sector two like as he goes down the hill here very easy to try and scrape the wall a little bit as he goes uh, down to the end of this straight oh, he's this one tenth he's improved on sector two so this is looking good I told you that sector one was a bit squirmish and sector two was okay I'm expecting though Campbell that you're going to produce the best sector three of your life around Baku so don't let me down as the DRS is going to be wide open right now he's going full power almost 200 miles per hour as he heads towards the start finish straight is it going to be pole Nope, it's not. It's P2, but he's in the 137s, and he's beaten Repass, and he's beaten the two Ferraris, and he's beaten the two Alfa Romeos. Yeah, really good lap time. You'll be mad on top still, though. Campbell in second. He's 15 hundredths of a second off the back of Yulbream, and of course Yulbream, formerly of NSX of course, and NSX will be hoping or, or Yulbream will be hoping certainly that he can try and set that provisional pole position lap. Daniel, by the way, is on a good lap coming through the middle sector. I think he's actually backed off if I'm not mistaken. He's running down into the end of the middle sector. This does not look quick at all. And so 113.9 is only a tenth up, so he's not really finding the time. Wouter, I think, is uh, off a lap as well, so I think he's going to be coming towards the line as well, but Yulbream out on top, Campbell second, repass and third. I was on about Vaporizer, by the way. Look at where Vaporizer is. Right in between Hyper and Verstappen. It's one thousandth of a second either way. And wow. those four drivers, Hyper down to Nathan, are covered by two thousandths of a second. You could, could literally not get any closer as, as somebody, I think, has just lost their front wing. I think that's Have a they? Red Bull. Steven, I think it was. Yeah, it was probably Steven. I see a saw yellow flag going into the castle, so I wonder if someone binned it oh, in the castle section. It's not. I don't know who it is. Oh, is I, think, I think just people letting people out and moving out of the way. So that's uh, Jim moving out of the way of Steven there. So that's, that's probably why. So we got uh, we got hyped up for nothing at the end of the day as well. So most people... Oh, I'll tell you what. Oh, no, sorry. I thought Nathan was coming through the final sector. He's not. Sorry. He's, he's going through the first sector, but he's a tenth up on the first sector, so he is improving a little bit. Campbell's going into the pits, and I'm sure Nathan will go into the pits as well as he's running out of fuel. But look at look at the gaps. This is F1. This is F1 esports all of a sudden. Like, the top ten are separated <laughs> by only three tenths, which means small margins for error, and you, and you could lose pole position if you just make... One small mistake, and some of these guys are running no assists as well. So, uh, and it is a trap which is quite difficult on the pad, and even difficult, on, it's difficult on any device to be honest. And if you nail it, then you're gonna score very high. And you want to be starting near the front or near the back. Has, is, uh, I, uh, is he on the lap? Yes, he could he be is. on the lap actually. He's, so, can he's three he get... and a half tenths up. He, yeah, he's, he's three and a He's three and a half tenths up coming through turn 20. Sorry to cut you off there, Jess. But coming towards the line right now with Izzo. He could go in around Jensen, your sort of area, I think, with this lap. Izzo coming to the line. 
and he goes behind Yostas with a 38 flat. Good lap time from Eza. Puts him in the mix, and it's now the top 12, separated by four and a half tenths of a second. Very, very close indeed. Pretty much the closest qualifying I think I've seen around here in Baku. And it is a long lap as well. I think the uh, f the lo longest lap on the calendar, I think, is either Belgium. No, it's Belgium. I was thinking Singapore, yeah. but it's not Singapore. Singapore's the third longest. So, yeah, be Belgium's the first. Then it is uh, Baku, and then it's uh, Singapore. And I, I just didn't think you'll get even closer. But you can tell that these drivers have been putting the practice. I've seen on the Discord them doing some practice lobbies around this track, which means they're very keen to get it right as well. And like we said, one of the hardest on this calendar as well and after this one we've got two more rounds of league of year we got uh, we got this one of course then we got japan and then we got the season finale in brazil which i have to say it's a good season finale i have to say so i, I wonder how the division one drivers are going to be doing now i'm a bit intrigued as to why some people have done their uh their final flying laps already like verstappen for example is he wanting to get a bit of clear air because i've seen around this track the usual ones who get their laps in early are usually the ones to get pole position sometimes, but I think Verstappen may want to get a few laps in early. But I've seen people on the mediums, which means they won't be wet, I don't think, at the start of the race. So intrigued to see what Verstappen does as he heads uh, past uh, sector two and he's going to go into the castle section. I don't know how they do these castle sections so fast. So I try to keep it cautious around there, but <laughs> look at that. This is looking good for Verstappen. It is looking good with Verstappen, beautifully done coming through the castle section. Not challenging me, of course, trying to go around the outside there on Mr. Tom Zaggers, of course, the graphics man for TTML and for PSGL Esports Cup event as well. I may as well mention that while we're at it. But Verstappen now down into all the middle sector. Is that Campbell I spy ahead of him? I think it is Campbell that's ahead of him. He's got to get a move on, though. He's a tenth up Verstappen, though. So this is looking quite quick, and I think it's the purple middle sector, as we've seen out of everyone. So Verstappen's on a good lap. He's got to get a toe. This is going to maximise his run to the line. Could we look at a mid-37 possibly from Verstappen if this toe is really, really crucial from Campbell there in second position in the minute Verstappen, though, on the run to the line. Is it going to go into full position? Let's find out Verstappen to the line. It is a mid-137. It's a 137.5. And that toe is so potent when you get in it. Verstappen is out on top. And now everyone is pretty much going to utilise the toe with a minute to go. Yes, the teammates are going to be close together now. I feel the Aston Martin will try and do the same, but look at this. Campbell is doing his lap, and I'm sure Verstappen, Verstappen has got to find a way to give the toe on Campbell now as well, but Verstappen is a little bit further behind, so that's probably not going to be happening. Your Bream has invalidated his lap, and how long do we have oh. left? Oh, that was close to the Mercedes driver. Yeah, Yildirim gets in the way of Montana and vaporizes ahead of him as well. This is going to be so potent there for Montana. He looked really quick, I've got to say, through the middle sector. He's getting the toe off the Alfa Romeo vaporizer, both, of course, in the same team in NSX. But Montana not going to utilize the full run like Verstappen did. Is Montana going to get full position on the run to the line? You <laughs> bet he will. 137.3. And he didn't need any DRS. And he, even Yildirim got in his way. The former NSX man tried to come up drums he didn't montana's out on top everyone now pretty much that is game over wow uh, with montana you let us down mate we thought you were gonna do the last <laughs> to first you did say that last week but uh i think that was his early lap as well so i have to say bravo to the champion that's why he's champion of division one folks he's he's very very quick but we'll see how Campbell is doing at the moment he's a temp up in the middle he's sector quick. he's flying let's see if he could beat montana with no toe at all no. no p3 but just behind his teammate we got a red ball that's about to cross the line that's not steven that's rocco in 19th he's two seconds down at the moment he's a second up in the middle sector can he go even quicker than most of his rivals 137 nine. he's in the top 10 brilliant stuff i believe we have a ferrari up next that is jensen who's kind of sitting avial's third not so long ago he's looking to be in the top three for now and i don't think oh. he's, he's he's slowed down okay so he's not going to be improving Aston Martin ran as Nathan East Crash coming out of the castle section at the top of the hill through turn 12. So that's where Nathan has spun, lost his footman completely. Don't think there was a wheel off that car. Hyper, by the way, is a tenth and a half up, and Justas is also 700 up coming through the middle sector. But these are the only laps I really can. Montana's on pole position, no doubt about that. The Mercedes is going to be on pole unless somebody can absolutely strike in a hell of a lap. 
This is going to be Montana's to lose. Montana out on top for Stappen, second Campbell, and third. He did a very good lap. He was level on par, I've got to say, with Montana through the middle sector. Didn't find the time, though, on the run down the straight. And now Justas on the run to the line. He jumps up to sixth. Good lap time from Justas. Hyper is on the lap as well. He runs to the line. He's run out of fuel across the line and doesn't improve. And I think with Steven coming across the line, that is indeed the end of qualifying. And it's Montana out on top. One lap we give him out on track. One lap, and he's two tenths quicker than Verstappen. If, it, if, if Montana was starting at the back, it would have been Verstappen on pole position by about a tenth. But no, Montana wanted to spoil the party. But at least Montana now, he's won the championship. He wants to have a little bit of fun. But I think he's realised that he's still got one title to focus on the night of constructors. So probably that is why he wanted to get the lap in, help his teammate a little bit. That's looking good if you're Haas or Mercedes. A 1-4 for Mercedes and a 2-3 for Haas at the moment. It's not looking good for ah. any of the other teams. I've clicked on why Montana's done this. Constructors. Repass yeah, yeah, and yeah, four. Yeah, yeah, you see, you the, see? There you the go. Staff and Campbell, yeah. Both Hasses, second and third. He needs to get a lap in. Otherwise, Haas would have been out scoring Mercedes. So that's why Montana's put a lap in. Two turns ahead of Verstappen. And now Mercedes is a favourite to take the, the title win here tonight. Uh, I, I, I am I am a I'm a mind reader when it comes to these type of things. I was like, why is Montana saying a laugh? And then, then I realised, ah, that is why. But I feel we're just waiting for a few Montana to go and retire in the pits. But my oh my, we're in for a really great race. There's a top 18 separated by a second. And even Daniel and Jim are quite close. Everybody managed to set a lap time around Baku. That is great to see. Nice and sunny. Is anyone going to beat Montana around Baku? It's going to be tough, but never say never. That's not even a question, I think. I think everyone is going to try and give the fight to Montana tonight. Montana's got nothing to lose, really, but he's got the cha the Constructors' Championship to gain, so I think that's what's more important on his mind. Montana, the out on top, for Stafford in second, Campbell in third. Repass his teammate in fourth. He's only 7,000 quicker than Yulbream, so that's going to be quite interesting. You'll start in second, you'll Melmat in seventh, and then it'll be Jensen, Rocco, Neo, is a hyper run off the top 12. Nathan will drop down to 13th as a result of that five-second penalty, then it's Vaporizer, Cantera, Steven, Wouter, top 17, separated by less than a second, Locke and Daniel, and I think it was Doom at the back of the field, if I'm not mistaken, as well. But looking in the chat on Discord, I can see that screenshot. Campbell, Hyper, Vaporizer, Verstappen and Nathan, at one point in the session, they were separated by, yes, four thousandths of a second. Five drivers separated by four thousandths of a second, and that was for fifth and ninth. <laughs> oh my god, can we get someone to tweet that please? Because <laughs> that would that would, that would be pretty incredible. And I think the drivers are gonna be relieved. Even myself as well is gonna be relieved that it is a dry session at the moment. So no rain to be seen. So the drivers are gonna be going all guns are blazing today. It's either gonna be me it's either gonna be memes to hard for outside the top ten. If you're inside the top ten, people may go brave and do the softer memes, or will the two stop be faster? There's going to be a mixture of strategies today, and we're going to find out which strategy is going to be coming out on top. Well, I've seen many different variations of strategy when I've commentated in other leagues on this game, and sometimes we see softs to mediums. And softs to mediums isn't at the question, because if they get their tyres online within the first four, four, four or five laps, they can pit in around lap nine or lap ten, go 16 laps on a set of mediums, it's quite comfortable with a very low tyre wear on a set of medium compound tyres. Of course, the top ten are actually qualifying on different tyres. Neo managed to choose a free choice, he's in tenth position, he qualified outside the top ten, and therefore he gets a free choice. Otherwise, the top nine have qualified on that set of soft compound tyres. Of course, Nathan qualified on that set of soft compound tyres and joined Dan in 13th as a result of that five-place grab penalty he picked up with a collision with Hyper. Looking at the strategies, though, it's a bit mixed further down the field. Is it, for example, Nathan, of course, on that set of softs. Vaporise and Wouter, quite interestingly, on that set of soft compound tyres as well. Mediums are Hyper, well, Neo, Hyper, Cantera, Steven, Larkin, Daniel, and Doom. They're all on a set of medium compound tyres, so it is going to be quite interesting. And of course, you've got to throw into the mix. Nathan is on more worn tyres than Vaporizer behind him. So, Vaporizer gets a good start on Nathan. He's probably going to be the quickest man on that set of soft compound tyre. Yeah, I agree. And the softs are meant to be lasting eight laps. So, if you want to get the soft to the end, you have to pit from lap 18 if you're on the medium compound tyres. And if you're on the soft from the start, you're really going to be pitting nice and early if you want to go for hards or 
for a set of means potentially as well. The means could last from about lap 10. So there could be a situation where there could be a safety car or there could be someone that's brilliant at tyre where they can make the soft last to lap 10 and they could do a soft to medium tyre easy. We, we just don't know what could happen here as well. But Nathan, I think he's going to be on like 6% tyre wear at the moment, whereas obviously everyone else on the soft is going to be outside the top 10. It's going to be on 0, 1%. So yeah, Nathan's going to be at a huge disadvantage. I think the ones on the soft, they got to get past the medium runners ASAP if you're outside the top 10, because otherwise, what's the point starting on the soft? Maybe they're thinking of a early safety car? Maybe, maybe. I think Hyper is vulnerable when the the, uh, the four mage lap is still in control of his car. Look, no front wing car obviously being on the four mage lap, but he is spun on that set of medium compound tyres, and I really hope that is not a sign of things to come. Possibly for Hyper, the person on the course starting in P12, Nathan, of course, just behind him in P13. Just though, I'm going to come across you as the predicted pit stop strategy comes up to stop lap five to eight and fifteen to twenty one, and then on Trasada Hards lap sixteen to twenty one. Two stop strategy seems favourable, but who on earth is your top three? Uh, I think I'm gonna go Montana, Verstappen, and I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna be go brave, and I'm gonna go Neo for P3 because he's on the interesting. mediums. Interesting. Yeah, interesting. Neil Dan and P10, of course, on that medium compound attire. The lights are about to go out. The five lights are on here for round 15 of the championship in League of Europe Division One. And it's lights and away we go. Montana gets a very good start. Verstappen's a bit slow off the start. Could get out, outrun by Campbell down in towards Turn 1. But Montana's already away. He's absolutely shot off the start. And he's 6 tenths clear. Coming through Turn 1. There's a little bit of contact further down the field. And Alfa Romeo got sideways. I think that would have been hyper on that set of mediums. Now here comes the pinch point through Turn 2. And the Ferraris need to make contact. Actually, Justas nearly into Jensen. Jensen, luckily, to keep within the top 10. Is it just goes past him? You'll know that. And Justas is now fighting side by side down in towards Turn 3. Looks to the outside line. There's a little but a contact, oh, and it's like Ocon and Raikkonen coming through there, and you'll know that now, spun into the wall, I'm not sure if there was rear damage on that car, I think there's right side end plate damage as well, on that car, possibly for you'll know that, luckily he's got the car still going again, he's in ninth position, Montana leads the way through the first half a lap, for Stafford in second, Campbell in third, and already Montana has broken the DRS by 1.1 seconds. That is just insane, I've been the top five of not by so they had a clean start, I think everyone made it through the first few turns, unscathed that was great to see but let's see if everyone makes through the castle section unscathed because that's quite the trickiest part on the circuit and it seems to me everyone makes it fine on the first lap so uh, i think we could get a sign of things to come here but drs not activating until lap three so there's still chance for the stappen to get within drs of montana but it's going to be very very tricky as we've seen a spinner that was i mean hyper that's dropped down into p20 so he's not had a good start of the race biggest gainers so yeah he has got damage it will be going into the pits biggest gainers Rocco's up three positions so is Valter uh, Neo is up two positions same as Larkin and we got the likes of Nathan Vaporizer Daniel and Jim gaining one position and we got the top five and um is uh staying where they are same with Cantera everybody else I haven't mentioned has drop down a position and it looks like Nathan's going to get another one as he got, gets past the Alpine car in a two turn number one and he's up into P11 doing quite well at the moment he's got to get past Jensen though to get back into the top turn yeah, Nathan getting left through, I think, by Isa. Both of them, of course, in the same relentless team. So, obviously, Nathan clearly feeling he's a quicker driver. On that side of soft compadres, you may as well go through. Jensen, by the way, looks to the inside line, coming through turn three. And Justas and Yulma might make contact. As I say, it was like Ocon and Raikkonen. I think it was 2017. Well, obviously, the Ferrari and the Renault back then made contact down in towards turn three. And that's where the contact was made. Luckily for Yulma, Matt, he hasn't got any damage. Hyper, by the way, had left side end plate damage on the car, so that's why he's in. Jensen, though, was right on the back and he's down the inside line in towards turn seven and you'll know just gonna let him go i think here jensen is through the ifr man he normally likes back here he, uh, he uh, had a podium of course in the psgl esports cup event and now he's doing he's into p9 so jensen making marks already further down the field it looks like getting quite close together vaporizer and Wouter getting quite close three tenths of a second separating them is there again on the back of nathan but luckily everyone keeping out of the wall it's been quite a clean start from a league one standard but montana two seconds clear of Verstappen in second, Campbell in third, and Reef has is honestly trying to apply a bit of pressure. I think he's being told by may maybe Montana to try and apply a bit of pressure to Campbell. These two are prone to making mistakes, Verstappen and Campbell. Very rare they do, but they are prone to making mistakes, and it could be the case where they do make one. Nathan, by the way, is on the back of Yul Mulmat for 10, and this is going to pick up a double toe. 
Yes, he is. Montana sending the passes. La, as we go, I think you might going Max. to the pits. Yeah, yes, damage. Right to the play. Yeah, right end play, so he's going to repair that as well. And uh, you saying they've got through unscathed, don't say that. You probably jinxed <laughs> it now. There's probably going to be some more interesting things to come. So we're going to say no more as they head through to and two and three. This is where the DRS then is going to be at its full effect. Campbell is, is going to see if he can work together with Verstappen. He's got to ring now as well. And three pads could not get past the two house boys, so maybe he can have a another chance in the next DRS straight in our laps time in, in this long share as well. The DRS trying is growing left, right and centre and I have to say I have un underestimated Jensen. I was almost going to predict him as a top three but I didn't think he was going to climb up the field so much but I did forget about the eSports cut. I think he could be up there as well with the likes of Neo as well. Neo is already up into A and the mediums are going to be the best tyre very very soon and you could already see him catching up to Justas as well. He's only about four tenths uh, behind Justas. So when will the sauce be the time not to be on compared to the means? Well, it won't be that long. And there is already Ooh! quicker. Oh, someone's had a bit of an up. Repaz. Repaz into the back of Campbell. Coming up the top of the hill at turn 15 through the left hand. The Repaz got his braking zone completely wrong. I don't think there's any front wing damage on the car. Hopefully there's no rear wing damage. Rocco, by the way, is going down the inside on a turn 18. Lovely move on the back of Yulbrim. I think Yulbrim's got damage as well on the right, left side end plate. Piper is out of the race through that's the castle okay. section. And that's a VSC. So VSC deployed. Repaz on the back of Campbell. Are these guys that are going to come in the pick then? Yes, Montana is in. Verstappen is in. Cam uh, Verstappen actually stays out. Campbell is in. Everyone looks like they're going to chuck on a set of medium combined tyres. And of course, the pick release is on, so that's why Repaz is going to be held actually with its pit stop. Repaz is held up, so he's going to lose a few positions for the VSC. The car has already been cleared, so I wouldn't be surprised if we get back to green flag racing soon. But Hyper causes the VSC through the castle section. He was by himself, crashed coming through the castle section, not enjoying things at all. And now he is down. Well, he's out of the race, down in 20th position. Verstappen, though, leading. Neo in second. Verstappen. I get the sense he's a bit of a sacrificial lamb, if I've got to be honest. And I'll say that because Campbell is down in 14th position. But look at how many positions Campbell has lost. Has there been underlying damage, possibly, on Campbell's car? Because he was in second, and now he's in the next sixth. Yeah, I'm, 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 a, bit, I'm a bit intrigued as to why, obviously, Campbell um, got... But he may be picked up damage from the Mercedes driver. I don't have a clue. But even a Mercedes driver repass came in as well. So... He thought that for repass, he thought he was going to lose more time um, staying out than going into the pits under the VSC because it's a 19 second pit loss around here. But with a VSC or a safety car, it does decrease by a, a few seconds. So any Ooh. chance to pit under the VSC or safety car is much recommended as Montana gets past, I think. Uh, does he get past Steve? Yes, he does. Let him through. Uh, let him through. So yeah, I think people are starting to realise that Montana is the go and uh, he's a lot quicker. And, they're not going to hold him up too much as well. So I think, so yeah, Montana's pitted. Quite a lot of people are pitted. Montana's the one to gain under safety car. Same with Rocco, actually, as well. He had a good pit stop under the VSC. Same with Just Us as well. Nathan as well. And Izzy, yeah. The, I think the Hanses could get a bit screwed about here. And obviously the House of Verstappen is staying out. Same with Neo, obviously, because Neo's on the mediums. Jensen, though, has got a beautiful run heading towards turn one on Neo, but he can't get the job done. Maybe in the next DRS zone heading towards turn two and three. We'll have to wait and see. Maybe Jensen can go for a late lunge here. He does not. Jensen's dropped back a little bit. Neo with straightlinespeed.com is looking to defend from that. Have we see Steven now going to the pit on from mediums to another set of mediums? That is interesting. That means he has to pit again because you can't do medium memes until the end of the race it's not allowed in Formula 1 unfortunately if you do that he will be disqualified so Stephen will be pitting one more time I've got to be honest I think Stephen might have had an underlying problem not sure if there's any floor damage suspension damage on the car but honestly he was struggling he let Montana through and he let actually I think it was Larkin and Daniel through as well and obviously Slaven now down in 19th position. Not sure if there was any sort of underlying issue. He let him through actually, he let Montana through actually at the top of the castle section, coming through the right hander of turn 11. This right hander here won ball with Cantera, who's in behind on Wouter. Hyper leaves the session though. We do thank him though for attending. The staff and the leading the way. And again, he's a bit like a sacrificial lamb, as I say. 2.8 seconds the gap. Neo is catching Verstappen. 
And he's pulling away, of course, from Jensen as well. And Jensen's seven P3. He's latching onto the back. It's eight tenths of a second as Yul Melmat now has crashed coming through turn seven. That could deploy a full safety, safety car. car. And it has. It is a full safety car. And Verstappen now, this really helps him. Everyone now has to stick to Delta time. There is a chance that Verstappen, I think, could come out maybe ahead of Rocco here. That, I think, must be a saving grace for the Haas driver. He was hoping for a safety car to come, and it's finally come for him. So he goes in, and it was not long before the pits, actually, for him. So that was good timing. Neo, he's had no choice but to pit. Same with Jensen, Walter, Cantel, Lark is going to come in as well. And I think Montana is going to come in the lead of this race. As Lark actually, no, Lark does not pit. Lark stays out. Everybody else is pitted except for him. Hmm. Interesting. Is he seeing something that we're not? We don't know. But everyone else is pitted. We'll see where Campbell ends up. Uh, or Verstappen ends up. Campbell ends up. Verstappen ends up ahead of his teammate. Yeah, Verstappen does ahead of his teammate. And do you know how I said I was predicting him to be behind Rocco? He's not. He's in sixth position. He's behind Justas. So Verstappen has actually been saved because Campbell's there in eighth position. Verstappen pitted a, a two laps later than what Campbell did under, of course, that VSC. And Campbell's the one that has been outdone, really, by the VSC and all of his hard work from second position. He's now down in net seventh position. Verstappen who's third, and he's now in a net fifth, so both Hasses have lost time. Rocco, as you said earlier on, he has gained the most out of this. I think he was actually P7, P8 coming into the first round of pit stops, and now Rocco, obviously, he's in a net P2. Larkin, of course, leading the way. Montana in second, Rocco in third at this stage, but we are underneath the full safety car. Interesting strategy to point out, though. A couple of the guys have gone on a set of hards. Neil and Yulbreen have gone on a set of hards, as well as Vaporizer and Steven. Daniel, however, completely miscommunicating. Maybe a strategy, maybe going for the uh, the quick switcheroo in terms of the tyres. He's on a set of soft compound tyre. And normally, when you're in a big old DRS train like you're going to be now underneath the safety car, Daniel has pretty much got no chance to try and make a move on anyone in front of him. Nah, maybe he was hoping to select the mediums or the hards and then he realised actually uh, maybe it's the wrong decision or maybe uh, Jeff put them on the wrong tyres to begin with. But... The thing is, he may have started on the mediums and there was no option just but to go on to the softs, potentially. And maybe if he pits now, then at least he does his mandatory uh, tyre compound requirement. We've seen that in a few races this season in Division 1. A few people try that. So maybe Daniel knows what he's doing and he's not going to lose too much time because he's going to be near the back anyway. So uh, why not try that strategy? Has I think he, oh yeah, I think he may stay out, you know. So if he does stay out, he's going to be in a lot of trouble. Uh, unless he moves to the left a little bit, I'm not entirely sure. Yes. I think we've got Repaz in as well. So I think Repaz is doing exactly, I think Repaz is going on a set of hards, and Daniel will probably go on a set of hards as well, most yeah. likely. Uh, or he could go on the mediums, actually. He can go on the mediums. Yeah, he just wants to get the two different tyre compounds done, done and dusted. Well, if you're near the back, that is, a, that is a sensible thing to do, I reckon. I think Repass had a front wing change there as well. I think the Mercedes actually changes front wing. So the ah. Mercedes pick group changes front wing. And now Repass is down into last position. And he was fourth. Mercedes are not looking good in terms of the constructors. Saying Montana is obviously outscoring Verstappen and Campbell. And that's enough at the minute. So I think Montana will probably wrap up the constructor standings. But Repass really needs to try and help his own teammate. Daniel, on a set of medium compound of tyres... 20 laps on a set of mediums can comfortably get to the end of the race. Around 65 to 70% tyre wear normally on this strategy. And Daniel, I think, has done the right thing. Where drivers might come in towards the end of the race, like the likes of Montana and Rocco, they could come in on a two-stop strategy. Daniel might not. Daniel's got a couple of laps fresher tyres, like Jensen, like Verstappen, like Wouter, and they're all on a set of mediums. Daniel, of course, is actually on a lap fresher than those guys that put it in under the safety car. But Larkin's out on top. Montana second, Rockham in third. Lap eight about to begin. We are a third of the way through nearly here in back of the land of fire, of course. But Larkin in that papaya coloured McLaren, he'll be hoping to try and get this safety car start going. And I think we're going to be probably seeing safety car in this lap. So Repass is going to join on and latch onto the back. And now we're going to see the safety car coming in, probably on the run down and towards turn 16, if not, probably just before turn 18, the left-hander, as now the safety car will probably come in this lap, unless Repass doesn't want to latch onto the back. Safety car, however, is in this lap. 
the slightest mistakes, I have to say, in the safety car will be punished and uh, they are being forced to choose between straight line speed and cornering speed in this restart. So Larkin has got a very tough job to do. Is he going to floor it now or is he going to wait until the last moment? We'll have to find out. Montana is going to be Ooh. interesting as well. Vaporizer had a collision with Kantara. He's got a five second penalty for it. It may be removed if it was not his fault it may be um the the overtake glitch that has happened and if and if someone overtakes in a safety car for no reason they will get penalized and the one who was wrongly overtaken will uh, get that removed like like in a few divisions lark is leaving it very late but there he goes <laughs> he's about to get started a good restart from both larkin and montana as they make their way towards turn one i think nathan's had a good oh, restart as well as a few mishaps into turn one already Jensen almost getting caught out as well. Jensen trying to go around the right-hand side of both the Williams and the Aston Martin. <laughs> Valter as well just being swamped by all these cars. He must be feeling a little bit worried at the moment as Vaporizer is in the pit. Says, oh, there's a bit of a tap oh. from Valter. And uh, who is it, Neo? Yeah, it is Neo. And uh, Jensen is now ahead of Valter up into 10th place. So he's almost where he was at the start of the safety car restart but not quite. Stevens had a poor one, though. He's dropped down position, down into 17th place. But it's Larkin that leads, Montana in second, Rocco in third. Oh, Wags is going to be holding up all of these guys. Yule Beam may as well try and send it down and towards turn seven. And in fact, Wags doesn't get that car stopped and Yule Beam is through. And now Cantera is through. And Doom is right in behind as well. And he tries to do what I need he did. Go around the outside of the castle section. He failed. Luckily for him, he failed. And now Doom oh. actually swings the car and he's in the wall. Doom is in the wall. I think actually he's kept out that wall very, very nicely indeed. He hasn't got any left side end plate damage. Watch your MC. Wooter has now lost his entire front wing, I think. Thing. Coming now through turn, uh, he's actually could picked up still right side end plate damage on the car, but he lets everyone through. Larkin, by the way, is under pressure from Montana, and now Montana with 88% of ERS to use up. Montana now the flying Swissman, the champion here in League of Division 1, is going side by side, of course, with Larkin, who, of course, fought and won the Division 2 championship last season, and now Division 1 against Division 2, quite literally, down in towards turn 1. Montana on the inside line, Larkin on the outside line, McLaren against Mercedes. And just about McLaren comes out on top and he hits the wall. Montana forced him pretty much off into the wall there. And Montana driving aggressively to get the lead of the race. I think that's going to get looked into, you know. And Larkin on the right hand side. He had no other to go. Bar hit the wall in that little kink. That little, um, the li where the marshal's post is. Coming through turn one. He's gone straight on as well as Larkin. Coming through turn three. And he's in the oh, wall again. Yeah, Montana leading the way. Rocco in second. Nathan in third. But I definitely think that that is probably going to get looked into. And I now feel Montana could pick up a penalty point. Possibly. I think he can as well. And then Rocco and Nathan were just like, thank you very much. I will retake that position. And Rocco's up to second and Nathan's up to third. Don't forget, Nathan had a five place grid penalty due to him colliding with someone in qualifying. And now he's up to third. He's doing a Lewis Hamilton, for goodness sake. He's not letting the pressure get to him. And he could still be on a podium because he's on the same strategy as Montana. But watch out for Verstappen. He's on two lap newer tyres. Compared to his rivals, he can get to the end, but as everybody else may be forced to a two-stop strategy. But with the safety car being out as long as it did, you never know what could happen in League of Europe. I think Neo and Yulbrim are committed to the one-stop around here, but Verstappen is looking very, very quick towards this uh, very long start finish straight. He was using his overtake, he can't get it yet. He's, he's been switching it on and off on, on this back straight then. Nathan's going side by side with Rocco. He could get P2 here before the DRS straight. And he does, I believe. Oh, now, I don't oh, think Rocco challenges, but Just Das does. I think Just Das was, uh, was capitalising on that. And Rocco yeah. was just concentrating on Nathan. So Just Das is up to third. Rocco, Rocco's down to fourth. I have been Verstappen. Could get him in. Montana is just flooring away and letting everybody else battle it. Battle for the podium positions, but Verstappen, is he gonna go for this kit? Is he gonna go Ooh. and get past Rocco? He does not, he stays behind. Very brave to do, but wow. Brilliant stuff from Nathan and just as, but Rocco, Rocco oh. was left for dust there. Repass tries to go around the outside of Neo. I think Neo and Yulbrim had a bit of contact coming through turn two. 
and Reapers has got ahead of them both. So Reapers now through and he's into 11th position. Remember, he was right at the back of the field underneath the safety car, and now he's into 11th position. He's absolutely flying through the field, and this, of course, gives Mercedes more points in terms of the constructors, and therefore, probably Mercedes picking up the constructor standings as well here tonight. Montana, the leading, 1.8 seconds is the gap. On to lap 11, pretty much we go on to. Montana leading the way, Nathan in second, Justas in third. Rocco's doing a good job in fourth, but I feel he might just be struggling either with the tyres or certainly with a little bit of damage, maybe light green damage possibly on one of the winglets for Rocco. Verstappen is all over the back of him, and to be honest, Verstappen can probably waltz past Rocco here without breaking sweat. He's got 60% of VRS. Rocco's got 40%. Verstappen may as well try and commit this move down and towards someone. Of course, he's going to have the DRS, of course, in enable. And look at this. He's going to draw alongside him halfway down the straight, and now, opening up the DRS, he's going to absolutely sail on by Rocco, however. Will he try and come back down and towards Turn 1? In fact, Rocco is trying to outdrag Verstappen down and towards Turn 1, but I think Verstappen, down the inside line gets it and Jensen sends it down the inside line of Iza very much like Ricardo but Iza now in seventh position Jensen down the inside line couldn't make the move done Jensen's up for this one Iza didn't want to let him through though and still Jensen on the back of Iza can he try and get the move done possibly down in towards turn three he's closing he's closing he thinks about it down the inside line but he backs out and I think it's probably the right thing to do Jensen stays in eighth Iza stays in seventh and your stats is all over the back of Nathan Yes, the top 12 do score points in this league and I think it's better to be scoring points than to try and go for a higher position and go out of the race. So I think Jensen is playing it very smart even though he wants to go for higher positions because he knows he could do very, very well in Baku. Three times is the gap now between himself and Izzo, so it's not over yet. And we've got, I think, the likes of Neo, who's probably gained the least out of the safety car restart. He's down in 12 and he's not liking those hards at all. Even your brim is catching up as well as a... Oh no, Repass has binned in the castle section. Could this be the end of the constructors? Oh, oh no. He's lost the entire front wing and he's out oh, of the and This is going to be a safety car. And your dream spun as well, I think, coming at the top of the hill. And it is a safety car. It is a full safety car. So Montana leading the way. He is now virtual Bert Marlander. Nathan in second. Justas <laughs> in third. And quite a lot of... um. A, a bit of an argument, well, not an argument, some points being made in the comment section about Montana's incident, which I'll come on to now, because obviously we've got the safety car in play. Montana leading the way. Are these guys going to come in now for a fresh set of medium compound tyres? Montana is certainly in. Takes it very nicely indeed. Nathan, however, stays out, along with Justas, along with Verstappen. All of these guys there, Rocker was in. Campbell stays out as well. Majority of the drivers seem to be coming in for a set of medium compound tyres. Now, Rocco, Iza, Cantera, Neo, Steven, further down the field. All of these guys further down are coming in. Montana, though, from the race lead in seventh position now. Daniel's ahead of him. Iza's behind him. And Iza is actually the one that has gained out the most out of this. And he's now in eighth position. And the rest of the field, of course, further down the field. And now further up the field, Nathan, your stats and the likes are now first and second. But coming on to the little bit of a... A, a little bit of the uh, the comments that are coming through, certainly about Montana's incident. I totally agree with Mads. It is to do with the barrier on the right hand side. The Marshall's post that pretty much comes out through turn one and the wall coming out of turn one. That is what I think has probably caused the incident. It didn't help that Montana nearly nudged him into the wall. It's very difficult to go side by side through turn one. So I totally agree. I think the wall probably more at fault than Montana. So Montana might get away with that one, hopefully. But you never know. It's up to the stewards, and the stewards might see differently. Yeah, they will. And luckily, the stewards will ask for the driver's POV, of course. So they'll have a bit more of a view than what we did as well, because the drivers are asked to record their footage just to make things easier. And I think the ones that, mainly the ones that appeared are the ones we pitted first under the VSC. And they think that those memes that they pitted on earlier can get to the end. And they will be on the fresher grip. And no matter what happens, those tyres will get to the end. So they will be doing a medium stint to the end because the memes can go from pretty much lap 10 to the end so that should be fine but with Nathan and Just As they were the ones to pit under the VSC I believe I don't know why they haven't gone into the pit same with Campbell so probably that's a mistake that they're going to take with a gamble and maybe they've seen the, the other races where it's been like this and we, they've seen people pay off but we, you never know as well Verstappen obviously I would have stayed out if I was him because 
Um, those memes I think can get to the end with the safety cars happening anyway. Same with Daniel as well. But you never know. The ones on send the lap on mediums, they can prove us wrong and get to the end anyway. And I hope that they can prove us wrong because that could be an, an epic end to the race. Cantero though has gone onto the hard tyres. Same with Jim and us, probably because they've run out of mediums. Yeah, I think it is, and obviously with the safety cars coming into play, mo a majority of these guys are probably going to be coming in. Jensen, Daniel is staying out. I thought, actually, haven't seen a, a collision further down the field, or is that just glitching? Oh, no, Jim's into the pit lane, that's why we've seen that. Jim is into the pit from a set of hard combat and I think he's going to go on to a set of mediums. He's co a comfortable gap over Larkin. Larkin, by the way, pit lane from a set of softs onto a set of mediums as well. So Larkin doing that, that the multiple strategy that you are allowed to do, of course, in Formula 1, where you do pick two driver uh, two tire compounds Juma's is comfortably ahead of Larkin and Larkin there down in 16th position this race is becoming like more of a war of attrition but Nathan out on top just our second but Zappin in third who would have thought that this is only the halfway stage and we've had about as much action as what we normally get here in the season of League of Europe Nathan out on top just our second but in third safety car out and of course myself and Jess taking you through the action as always tonight and of course Mark will be back I think from his trip to Leicester where he is is, unfortunately, I think, in a very poor, poor city in England. <laughs> oh, I can't say much because I'm from Sunderland. <laughs> I hope he's having a good time and obviously there are some storms going around in the UK so make sure you stay safe and wrap up warm um, if you are uh, suffering from the wind at the moment. I know some people, including my compatriot in the commentary box, has had some snow so uh, <laughs> yeah, I won't let him rub him in too much but to be honest I don't like snow too much so I'm not too bothered about that but uh, yeah, I, I, I'm a bit shocked that there hasn't been that many safety cars because in, in the race I did about a month ago at this point in the race I think we were our third or fourth safety car but these drivers at the top of their game they've probably raced back a lot, lot more times than we did so that's probably why there's been less safety cars and they're only on their second at the moment I believe safety car could come in this lap because everyone has caught up again yes it is Ooh. I did the, I did the first safety car restart James I hand it over to you for this one yeah, Nathan is the virtual Bo Marlander. He is now the virtual safety car, and he is keeping a very, very high pace. Higher, of course, than what Larkin did underneath his safety car restart. So Nathan going to try and channel this. He's going to try and make the pace just slow and then quicker and then slow. And I think Nathan is probably going to go around where the DRS zone is. This is where he could try and eke out a bit of a gap. Of course, he's got Justas in behind, and then he's got both QVR guys in behind as well. So that could be a little bit of a safety buffer, possibly from Nathan, if he can try and get this done but of course Verstappen's on two lap fresher tyres or three lap I think fresher tyres than Yostas and Nathan ahead but we're going to watch this restart of course on board with Yostas there is Nathan in front of him and Yostas now Nathan I think is preparing to go any second now he will go at the DRS detection point there is the DRS detection point and he's now gone right on the DRS detection point and Yostas is caught napping and that also catches people like him behind and Jensen is on the back and Daniel's actually side by side with him running down in towards turn one literally meters apart as we come down and down in towards turn one and Campbell Still in fourth, Daniel all the way around the outside of turn one gets the move done. So a lap pressure tyres comes into play and Jensen nearly sent off into the wall. Montana is a through. Rockle through as well and Rockle's trying to go around the outside of Isa coming to, through turn two. And now the Red Bull on the back of the Williams running down in towards turn three. It's a very clean restart by all. Vaporizer on the back of Cantera further down the field could get quite tasty down in towards turn three. But it's not quite close enough. Nathan leads the way. Yostas in second. Verstappen in third. And honestly, Nathan judged that restart very nicely indeed. Rockle still trying to go around the outside of it uh, coming through turn four not quite close enough is he going to risk it in towards turn five and six no he stays in behind and now for the round of lap he will probably stay in behind as well but nathan judged that restart very nicely indeed however yostas is still right on the back of him and montana has only gained one position as a result of jensen's mistake through turn one Yes, and I wonder if it's going to be in a similar situation to what we've seen in Monaco in real life, where the faster driver has been held up by the slower driver, and you just can't overtake due to the DRS train that is forming at the moment. But we know Montana can pull the gap, and we will see if the drivers will let them through or will they fight for it. If I was Daniel, I would fight for it. He will probably think, who cares if you're the Division 1 champion? I'm still going to try and gain as many positions I can get. And Because don't forget, Daniel is fighting for the runners-up positions in this championship and Montana is not going to stop Daniel in this fight so he's got a brilliant run does Montana this, this could be easy. an easy move or is Daniel going to fight for it I don't think Daniel's fighting for it he is not as well, a we got a yellow flag that is a uh, oh uh, I thought 
foot Vaporizer. somebody out of the race, but it is an Alfa Romeo that just had a bit of a moment. And yeah, Vaporizer. In the pits. Yeah, Wagner into the pit lane. I think he might have got caught up in a little bit of contact, Vaporizer. He's in the wall, coming out of turn 18. So the right hand of turn 18 through uh, so the right hand of turn 19, I should say. He, I think he either got caught in the outside curve or spun. I did see that on the mini map as opposed to seeing it in real life. So Vaporizer there into the pit lane. Wagner also into the pit lane as well. So both them 15th and 16th. Montana there in fifth position. Vaporizer has retired in his pit box, which is the good thing to do. He's retired in his pit box at least instead of retiring out on track or retiring halfway down the pit lane like some drivers normally do. And if that is one of you, yes, I am talking to you. Nathan out on top, your stats in second, Verstappen in third, Campbell in fourth, Montana in fifth. And to be fair, Montana is absolutely rampant on the back of Campbell. He's five tenths in behind. Daniel holding up everyone in behind as well. Rocco, by the way, I think he must have picked up some sort of damage. We alluded to it earlier on, or certainly I alluded to it earlier on. Rocco, I think, had a bit of underlying damage. Whether he got a foot wing change, I don't think he did. I think he got held up in the pit lane. And is it there in P7? Is beginning to hold them up. And the, both of them, of course, are on the same strategy. But with Daniel in front of them, you've got to try and work together to try and get past him. And I think this will be the opportunity to try and get the move done, as Montana is also on the back of Campbell. This is going to be game on, isn't it, for Montana as he started the race from pole position with a sensational lap and he's looking to climb his way through the field just like Lewis Hamilton did around Brazil and he's going to pick people apart. First, it is Campbell then as he goes past quite comfortably and is he going to do enough to try and get the slipstream of Verstappen? I don't think so, but DRS is unable. So heading towards turn two and three in a second, Montana should have do enough to try and close in onto Verstappen and just doesn't get past at least one of them. He's caught up to the top three. This is crunch time for Montana. I don't know he's going to be close enough, but maybe the next lap he can get the overtake as well. This is insane for Montana. I have to say, driver of the race so far, even when he's pitted oh, on the safety car. As Daniel tries to go for a move past Rocco with some damage, and he does. Wow, how did he not get damage out of all of that? There was a bit of a tap there. Rocco almost went into the wall there as uh, we head towards the end of set to one. Go on. Oh my goodness, he's what going a for a lunge. Daniel going for the oh. switch back then on the back straight. And a few corners to go before we reach the castle section. Someone's got to back out, otherwise, it could end in tears. Daniel oh, brilliant. Off and Rocco stays in P6. Wow. Rocco actually got the move done on Daniel and all of that, so Rocco's when he's into P6, that was brilliant driving by them both, inches apart, little bit of contact, but wheel banging, and that was on the limit, but it was absolutely brilliant, and Rocco, three lap all mediums, he's flying now, he's got a free traffic ahead of him, 1.7 seconds to Campbell, Campbell left onto the back of a DRS train, Rocco has got to try and make it count in the corners now, because otherwise, he is going to be left in a bit of no man's land, with Daniel now nearly a second off, and Montana, by the way, is on the back of Verstappen, and do you know what, I think he could get your stats as well, he's got Verstappen, Running down the straight, will he get Yostas and Nathan? Y Nathan yes, uh, nah. Nathan and Yostas are about to go side by side down in towards turn one as well. And the Ferrari switches to the inside line, will get the job done down in towards turn one and should be job done. And it is Yostas and Nathan winning this through, but look at that, and now causes a bit of a Constantina effect because they got a little bit sideways out of one. Nathan right on the back of him, and look who's on the back of these two. Montana's right on the back of these two, and now on the back of Nathan, he's not going to use up any deployments in his EOS, and I think that's quite smart to be honest. Daniel is fighting with Izzo further down the field as well. There's it for 7th and 8th position. And now Daniel, is he going to try and risk it down the inside of turn 3? We saw contact there earlier on in the race. But no, Daniel stays in P8, Izzo in P7. Rocco, 1.6 seconds off. As I say, he's got to make a count in the corners. But I think it'll be less than a second after this lap. Yes, indeed. I have to say, Daniel didn't want to go risky, I think, at that point. Because he knows that he was close last time. And he would rather stay in this race for the fight for second in the championship and retire from this race as well but I think Montana's just being a bit patient oh it's Nathan that's been oh. in the castle section and that is easy because I didn't think Montana would get the move done that quickly <laughs> I, was, I was about to say Montana was going to get the move in, into turn one and now he gets the move done in the castle section due to Nathan's mistake I wonder if Nathan has picked up from wind damage I think he has picked up some sort of damage even if it's floor because Verstappen is going to try oh. and get past him as well almost a little bit of a lobbed up once again as they head towards turn 16 Verstappen now gets into P3. Oh, Nathan's in the wall! Who's Campbell's in the, in the wall as well! And he's been caught up and he's out the race! Campbell's out the race! Oh, that no. is really, safety really terrible! Again. It's another safety car! It's another safety car! Campbell! 
was the unfortunate man there. I've got to be honest. He, he was. Uh, Nathan got forced into the wall, I think, by Verstappen almost. Verstappen made contact, and it's exactly what happened in lap one with Montana. Montana forced Larkin off into the wall, and it's exactly what happened again. Coming through turn 16, the wall comes out on you. Nathan, the wall was too much. It uh, was coming too quickly at him. Couldn't avoid the wall. Campbell in behind tried to avoid. Didn't. Ghosting system failed. He is out the race. Nathan continues on. Broken front wing. He's down in 12th position. And now we've got another safety car. Montana leads the way. Rocco second. Isra in third. What a mad race this is. Yeah, so due to this safety car happening as well, we got people that are outside the top five bubble, as it were. Apart from obviously just Asper Stappen and Daniel pitting for the soft compound of tyres, which does last from, you guessed it, end of lap 18 and with it being under delta they can get those softs to the end if i were them if you haven't pitted go on to those soft tires it will make it so i don't know why nathan has not gone for the soft compound tire this may quite be a mistake here but for the top five i wonder are they going to be a bit of a danger maybe more probably not montana because he's probably going to be quick on the memes anyway but i would say the what the others on the memes obviously rocco is a Neo and Steven, they're going to be under pressure from just after Verstappen behind. Maybe Daniel as well could be back into this. Cantero, who's near the back early on in the race, he's in, I'm just trying to say, if the softs overtake the medium runners, apart from Montana, he could be a net P5 here. He could be in that P5. I think Montana, honestly, is going to be under pressure from Rocco. Rocco looked quick on that stint. He's on that set of mediums. And honestly, if I was these guys on a set of mediums, I'd be staying out to the end of the race because there is no way you are going to get into the pit lane, come out in front of this pack because they're already latched onto the back of the safety car queue. More than likely, you're going to be ending up behind Jensen and in front of Wouter down in P12, P13 region. So Montana is going to try... I think and last these ties out to the end of the race. They, they've got no choice now. Yostas, on a set of softs though, has not got a choice either. He's now on that set of softs committed. Nathan, I think he's chosen the set of mediums. Whether or not he hasn't had enough tyres in terms of the soft compound and whether or not he had enough tyres in the first place remains to be seen. But Nathan, I think he's done this, possibly. Either to go on to a set of, uh, set of soft compound tyres this lap around, or possibly he has chosen this strategy because he realizes that everyone is not going to get to the end of the race on that set of soft compound tire given how high the tire wear actually is on that set of soft compound tire so i think nathan he he's done a smart strategy but he's going to be done he's going to be dumbfounded somewhat by june by jensen on that set of softs wouter is back in on a, on a fresh set of soft compound tires as well. But Montana leads the way. Rocco in second. And do you know what? When Montana and Rocco get battling, there's normally an incident. Oh, God. We hope that doesn't <laughs> happen. We hope we could, they could keep it clean around Baku. So watch out for Izzet and Neo as well. I did say watch out for Neo in this race. And he could potentially be up for a podium. He's in P4 right now. And if he could have a good stint on those mediums, uh, that would be amazing for him as well. We're just waiting for Val to to uh, catch up to the pack and then we could go racing again and let us know in the comment section um, or in the chat who you think is going to win this race are the softs going to make it to the end which i personally think they will or do you think the likes of nathan or the guys up the front will win this race or will montana get a, a race win once again he doesn't need to but whatever he could do to help the constructors will be amazing because don't forget there's one house driver out of this race now so that leaves just one Haas and one Mercedes to fight it out now. And I, I can't do maths very well. Uh, at the moment, is Montana doing enough outright to uh, secure the constructors for Mercedes? Well, he hasn't got the fastest lap of the race, so he hasn't got an extra point there. But he's on 25 points. Verstappen down in seventh position, I believe, is on six points, if I'm not mistaken. So that's a, a deficit of 19 points that Verstappen has got to try and overturn on a set of soft compound tires compared to Montana. And of course, Montana's already up at the, up back at the championship. So we would have been talking about that in terms of a championship fight. Safety car, however, is in this lap. Montana, once again, the virtual Bern Marlander. He is now the virtual safety car. And we've got seven laps to go after this lap is completed. Lap 20 out of 26. 
I wouldn't rule out another safety car in this race, to be honest. Montana on top, Rocco in second, Isa in third. We are about to go green once again here in Baku, the land of fire. Is there going to be fire out on the track as we are about to go green? Hopefully, there will not be any collision. And Montana goes early. Montana has already strolling. Five, there six, Collins over Rocco, down and towards turn one. And Verstappen is side by side with Yostas, but he can't overtake down and towards turn one either. And further down the field, there's more side by side action. Daniel's right on the back of Verstappen. Now Verstappen can get the overtake done on Yostas if he so wants to. Can he go down the inside line? Not quite. Larkin and Nathan, however, are side by side down and towards turn one. Nathan gets the inside line. Larkin nearly falls down into the wall again. And then the side by side start again coming through turn one but Nathan's got the move done so Nathan through and he's into P10 medium seems to work better than a set of softs he's pulling away from Larkin early on Yostas as well is going to get Steven and Steven doesn't make a fight of that at all so Yostas now through and he's into fifth position one tick off his list he's got four more to go Yes, indeed. I have to say, Nathan's doing a great job on these mediums, so maybe you were right that the mediums could be a more durable tyre for this, and it seems to be this tyre wear is perfect at the moment, so maybe the soft runners are probably regretting this at this moment in time. Montana is pulling away from the likes of Rocco, so maybe it might have been the wrong decision to pit, because just as was on the podium, and his chance for podium now could be second to none unless he gets past Neo, and Iza, which is going to be hard, but with this DRS train going to be growing bigger, who knows? Because I, 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 and you might be right, it could be a late safety car, but you can't really gamble about it. And we've got to watch out for if people underfueled the car. It doesn't look like people have underfueled the car, because everybody, I think, um, is behaving well, because otherwise there will be a yellow warning light showing up on their cars as well. Montana is hardly using any ERS until now, until he gets onto the back straight, because he's under no pressure, but he's got to keep, make sure that he keeps everyone behind him, because he knows that Justas is closing in now <laughs> on Neo. I, I, and as I was saying, Justas is going to get past the Stafford, he's going to get past Steven as well, and I'm going to say that Neo could actually get past just us actually into turn one, but he does nope. not just upset the fastest lap of this race then. And can he actually close in onto Izza? It's gonna be ever so tight, but don't forget Izza does have a time penalty, whereas just us doesn't. He does. Doom has got overtaken as well by Larkin. So Larkin through and he's into P11. Doom there in P12. Trying to get the move done by Larkin through. Down and towards turn one. And actually, Doom's going to come packing him. Down and towards turn three. Down the inside. Let me saw contact. He running on. He goes too deep. Is he in the wall? Just about. But he keeps it out of the wall, I think. And Larkin's out side by side. Trying to go around the outside through four. Can he get the job done? Yes, he can. The XL man is through. Absolutely excels with that move. No pun intended there. He is through and he's into 11. Jensen is out through and into 12. Doom is absolutely struggling and White has just outdone him around the uh, outside of turn six. Doom now dead into 14th position. It is not his race at all. He may as well just retire in the pit lane because he's just been outdone by three drivers quite handsomely as well. Doom there in P14. White are there still into P13 as well. But Montana leading the way. Nine tenths of a second. Isa is pushing Rocco quite hard as well. Four tenths of a second. Yossas hasn't had the effect so far, and that's in a soft compound tyres as per normal. Verstappen, however, on the back of Neil, he could look to try and get the move done, of course, down and towards someone. DRS, of course, will be enabled next lap around. Montana leads away, Rocco second, Isa in third. The race slowly building to an absolute crescendo. Yes, it is, and don't forget, the constructors are on the line. The Hassan Mercedes, so Verstappen has got to get the move done from to which he's going to try to at least. Heading towards the Sarbanes straight on there. We can also see Jensen trying to get past Larkin as well. And that's, we just go. Oh, and Ezra, sorry. DRS enabled. Ezra's, and we got Ezra the down move, the inside Ezra. of Rocco. Down the inside gets the move done. So Ezra's now through and he's into P2. And Rocco struggling on that set of mediums, it seems. Verstappen got the move done on Neo as well. Daniel thing got the move done on Cantera. So he's doing he's into eight. So Verstappen through and he's into fifth. Yostas, however, on the back of both Rocco and Izza, but Izza made that move stick come from a mile back, but got the move done in towards turn one. Yes, indeed. I think Izza, I have to say, Izza has been the star so far um, from the best of the rest side of things. He, he, I think he likes his sort of race attrition tracks because he's really quite good at it and he can avoid the carnage as well. And the safety cars does help him a little bit as well as we can see Cantera oh. he's having a nice fight he's going to go no. on the right hand side of Daniel and is he going to make I it think... stick he's made it stick and I think Neil nearly went in the wall there as well he's been overtaken by Steven oh and he's overheating those tyres he might have rear damage actually on the car Ooh. 
Coming to the castle section, he's fine. He might have just overheated the tyres. He certainly had a moment coming out of turn six. He's lost the move to Stephen. So Stephen Flynn is into P6. Neil's now in P7. All of the guys in the set of softs and behind. They've got no chance to try and make up the gap now to the likes of Montana, to the likes of Izzer. They're going to be paying out for these plum positions further down the field. And then brings Justas right into play now for possibly the race win. Can he get Rocco here? Rocco's going to drag him onto the back of Izzer, coming through the left and right of 18 and 19. And look at Justas, absolutely floors it coming out of turn 19. He's already passed Rocco halfway down the straight. I think he's going to get Izzer as well because Izzer's a sitting duck down the straight. And Justas is going to make two for one. Buy one, you get one free down in towards turn one. And Justas is through and he's into P2. Rocco tries to look to the inside line there but doesn't. Neo I think is struggling and he's now still down into ninth position got out done by both Nathan and Cantera running down the straight Montana leads the way 1.9 seconds for yourselves clean track ahead of him can he do it well, we'll have to wait and see. And the deal between the softs and the mediums at this stage is about six tenths of a second. And there's three laps to go. So it's going to be tight for just us to get past Montana. But if Montana makes a mistake, which is hardly unlikely, just us <laughs> could try and get past. Well, we'll have to wait and see, of course. And I think Cantera could be under pressure from... Actually, no, he's not under pressure. He's going to be attacking Nathan as well. Well done to the penalty front, by the way. Is as the only driver to get a time penalty obviously it's hard to get a time penalty around here um unless you cut miraculously um in sector one which is which is quite hard to do anyway and maybe even the castle section as well it's nice how people are actually name the castle section as well fair play to them so far we've still got four team runners which i have to say is quite respectable around baku in division one so well done now the gap is 1.7 just as could be under DRS range in on the final lap if, if he's uh, continuing that pace. Montana could lose the race victory, but Just as has oh, got wow. less DRS. Montana has got plenty. So who's going to win this? I think Montana has the edge, but don't count out Just as for the time being. Well, Yostas has got a D-rate now down the straight. He's got less than 10% ERS, and Montana is just handsomely using the, his ERS wherever it needs to be. Yostas is catching down the straight and towards Simon. So, sets the fastest lap of the race, pulls 1.3 seconds ahead of Izzer. Rocco tries to look in towards Simon. I think, honestly, this is now more favourable for Verstappen to be on the podium. He's right there, in behind on Rocco and Izzer. He was more than the second off last lap around, and Rocco... Going to be trying to pressurise Izza now down in towards turn three. He's going to come from an absolute mile back. And do you know what? I think he's going to try and get the move done here. Down in towards turn three. He's already alongside. Gets the car fully alongside. And now down in towards turn three. Gets the move done. But he's got to be careful, Izza. He's on the back now. Uh, he's on the back of Rocco. But he's now going to be under pressure from Verstappen and behind. And Verstappen can try and make the move done. 1.6 seconds. I honestly don't think that this gap has got to close to underneath the second. Montana has pretty much got this race from that safety car restart. He's pretty much secured that race. Yostas is just trying to chase a shadow. Yeah, you never know what could happen. I do see a spark in the castle section barrier, which is weird. So it might have been uh, the sun shining or it just came from a car from earlier on. I don't have a clue. But yeah, with the way Montana's pushing, I think it's going to be hard for Yostas to take the race win. But I have to say, Yostas gained quite a bit of positions um, in the safety car restart anyway during the race. So I have to say, you will probably go home walk over with his head held high i think same with rocco as well same with Izzo as well the top four doing an absolutely fantastic job verstappen losing out quite a bit nathan with that five second penalty has gained a lot i have to say the team of the stream so well the team of the race is going to be red bull rocco gained six places and uh, stevens gained nine so all together they've gained quite a lot of positions combined as well daniel's gained nine as well but Red Bull, good points for them in the constructors, even though it won't mean anything for now. Steven could close in two seconds Izzer. out of the gap as Izza tries to get past Rocco into turn Lovely. one. Nailed it. Absolutely nailed it. Rocco is shrugging a little bit, probably due to the damage, but Steven, he was near the back earlier on, and he's now challenging for seven, I have to say. Bravo, but he's going to get swamped by the likes of Cantera, who's also had a fantastic race also. We'll see if Cantera's going to get the move, potentially. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> yeah, easy done for him, but I have to say, fair play to Stephen, though. Stephen's race, he's still doing a marvellous job. Can he hold up the, the drivers at the back? He's got one and a half laps to go to make this happen. 
I think he can hold on for eighth quite comfortably. It's a seven P3. He's going to be dropping down positions, but obviously it's not going to be enough, I don't think, for Steven. There was a bit of a sideways moment there. Nathan's getting very frustrated on the back of Verstappen. Coming through turn seven, there is a yellow flag, and I think it's Larkin that spun right at the back of the field. So Larkin has spun through turn six. He has spun into the wall. I'm not sure if there's any end plate damage there. We'll have to look and see. But Montana, 1.9 seconds. Medium's now quicker than a set of soft companion tyres. Justas now in second. Pretty much looks on for that. It is the battle for third. That is going to heat up. Larkin again has crashed coming through turn seven. So there's the yellow flag there. He's got the car going again. And speaking of Larkin, he's lost his front wing entirely. So Larkin is going to have a really hard job to try and get that home, I think. But Montana leading the way. Justas in second. Rocco is going to come back and is a here. He's got 25% of VRS. Verstappen's got 17%. And do you know what? Verstappen is closing in better than Rocco. However, the slight slip through. Oh, Nathan has crashed. Coming through turn 19, just in the slipstream of Verstappen. So he is out of the race. Verstappen, though, on the back of Rocco. Rocco was going to try and do an Isa, possibly. Down in towards turn 1. Is the gap going to be there? I don't think he's going to close enough. Down in towards turn 1. Isa stays third. On to the final lap we go. Montana leads the way. Yossas in second. Isa in third. Verstappen, I've got to be honest, though, still looks on for P3. As long as he gets past Rocco, he is pretty much through. Daniel, I think, has also had a moment coming out of turn 1. And Nathan, of course, crashing out the race. Verstappen, 1. One last attempt to try and get the move done on Rocco. Not quite enough. He has to sit and wait in behind. And Steven, not going to get the move done on Cantera either. Wow, I have to say, Steven, a moment ago, has been threatened by Cantera, but now he's actually on the challenge. I think he's showing that the Sid's lip stream around there is definitely OP. It's hard to uh, defend from another car, but it's, it's uh, less difficult to try and follow another car because of the slipstream, but I have to say, Steven is doing a marvellous job. Verstappen is having a good comeback as well. Free car train for P3 of this race. Isa is doing a beautiful job, trying to hold on. He almost had a bit of a slide there. I think Rocco could have gained a bit of time there, heading in and towards uh, this next section, going down the hill then. But Isa's straight line speed is second to none. But don't forget, Isa's got a time penalty, so Rocco could get a podium. But we got to watch Man Montana. He got he got pole position by only doing one lap, and he, he pitted when he needed to and timed the strategy perfectly. And he's going to cross the finish line now. He will. Montana's coming around the kink of turn 20. He's going to come across on. He's already weaving down the straight. He's very cocky indeed. Montana Don't running toward it. the line. Will take the win here in Baku. Montana wins and extends his championship lead. Still, Yossas in second. Isa in third. I thought it was going to be a side by side. Actually, it could be side by side. Cantera actually gets out done by Steven across the line. Steven is soon. He's into P6 and Cantera crashes out of frustration. Daniel didn't even make it across the line. He did actually, but he lost his front wing. Daniel makes it across the line in 12. In the end, Stephen has safely outdone Cantera down the straight, and that is why, because Cantera had less than 10% ERS crossing the line. Neil was only two tenths of behind, and Jensen was only a tenth behind that as well, so it was quite close in terms of that. Montana, though, was one. Yossas in second, Rocco in third. Larkin still driving around with no front wing. To be fair, he drove a solid race. He's out of the points, but still McLaren finishing 12th and 13th. I think they will be quite happy just to get to the end of the race, quite frankly. Larkin across the line to finish in 13th position. Really hope you enjoyed that one at home. I certainly did in the commentary box. I'm sure Jess did as well. Drive the day, what about the game fans? Stephen. Well, I have to say, as well as Montana, I have to say, Stephen, I think, showed what this, what the League of Europe is all about around Baku. He never gave up and uh, he uh, capitalised on other people's mistakes. And sometimes you got to do that. And he, he, he may not be the faster driver, but other people might make more mistakes than you and you will take advantage. But he overtook like a dream in the last corner and that's why he gained a position but Montana he didn't need to get the race win today he secured the championship already last week but this is one step towards the constructors title that Mercedes have been hoping for for so long in division one but it is Montana that wins from Justas, from Rocco from Verstappen from Isa from Steven who's got from 16th to 6th Isa from 11th to 5th we got Cantera from 15th to 7th Neo in 10th to 8th, Jensen from 8th to 9th, so he's dropped down a few positions. Jume, don't forget, even though he's had a bit of a horrible last in, he don't forget he came from the back of the grid and finished in 10th, so you'll probably take that, and he's probably will lead to a finish. And your final point scorers are Velta and Daniel. No one gets the fastest lap point because Nathan has retired from the Grand Prix, and Larkin just missed out on the, the on any point at all. But your retirements are Nathan Campbell, Vaporizer, Jewel Reapers, Jewel and 
hyper and that has been the Azerbaijan Grand Prix and we're about to get in the top three for an interview and I'm sure Montana's going to be very happy with that. I've literally said in the Discord that there's going to be no interview so I've literally got to oh. go after the end of the stream. So oh, unfortunately, yeah, there's going to be no interview and I've realised as well you've got about 20 minutes until your race as well. My interviews normally take quite a long time. So I think we'll be eating into that practice time for you, certainly. So that's why there's going to be no interviews tonight. And I've got to go, as I say, after tonight's race. in Baku, which has now finished, of course. A big well done, of course, to our top three, of course, being Montana. And the other two were, because I've just totally escaped my brain. <laughs> Um, let me have a look. Let me check the stream. Do, 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 do. It's uh, just Das and Rocco who got the podium spots as well as Montana. Yeah, fantastic podiums for them three. The Lithuanian, of course, finishing in second. The Brit, of course, and Rocco finishing in third. And Rocco did a phenomenal job, I've got to say. And credit where credit's due. I think it's TRT Bunty in the comment section on the FRL Live account. Uh, he predicted the top three. So well done to you. You get... I don't know, a pat on the back. Brownie That's points. That's all you get from me. A pat on the back. Maybe an extra point for fastest lap. Yay. Or fastest finger first. <laughs> well, I don't know. Uh, yeah. Well, we'll find of something possibly going in towards next week. But that has been, of course, the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. Next week, we go to Japan. And Japan, Jess, is one of those tracks where I think the drivers absolutely hate something called the curbs. Yeah, I think, I think I've driven around it a few times. I love it around this track, apart from the S's and the deadly curves on it as well. Any any little mistake on the S's, it will just ruin your lap completely. And obviously the tyre temperatures are a big factor as well. But it is definitely a good track for racing, a fan favourite as well. But uh, we'll see what the drivers could do. I think it could be another race of attrition next week, I think. Less than Baku, but I think a little bit more fun than Baku. Turn one, I think, is going to be a bit of an issue, I think, next week. I think a few people will go off the road to try and avoid the carnage, I think. Yeah, definitely. So I think Japan is one of those tracks where you're going to end up in the wall and there's going to be safety cars. I think that is just absolutely inevitable, and especially from a race like Azerbaijan that we've just had. I think safety cars are going to be of a premium in the final two rounds of the championship for Japan and for Brazil. But that has been the end of the stream tonight. A big thank you to Miss Jessica Ball for joining me in the commentary box. An absolute privilege, as always. The scene of our first commentary together, and hopefully it is not going to be our last either. May, may, uh, maybe there will be more opportunities to, opportunities to come, but thank you for having me. You are very welcome, and thank you for having me as well in the commentary box. I know we uh, we, we can come across each other, but hopefully it all worked well, and hopefully you guys enjoyed the stream. If you did enjoy the stream, of course, like, comment, subscribe. Take that notification bell, of course, if you are new. More racing to come tonight in terms of Division 2 and Division 5. Ten past eight UK time are both them. Jess, you're going to get another podium now to now my job. I can just feel it. I can uh, just no, feel it I'm in not. my waters. <laughs> No, I'm not. Baku, I just suck at Baku, but uh, um, I'll see. I'll see what I could do, and uh, hopefully, I can get some uh, a good result. It's a race for attrition for me, but uh, I, I, I need to go now. It's time to get some practice in. It is time to get some practice in, and we're going to end the stream on that. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, goodbye. Bye.